Welcome back. Now I'm going to do a demo, which is also a really good uh, refraction problem. I'm going to have a container like this, uh, and I'm going to eye this container from a certain angle, right? As such that I barely see the bottom corner of the cup or the glass or whatever the, uh, that you have, right? So you only want to be able to see the corner of the of it. The distance from your eye from the tip of the cup doesn't matter. You could be any distance far away, but the angle needs to be that you barely see the corner. Then I'm going to tape a piece of rock or coin or something here. Coin or rock. Some small piece of object, I'm going to tape it down. And of course, if you put it here, if you put it anywhere here, you won't be able to see it, right? So then I'm going to start filling this cup with water. As I fill it up with water, what's going to happen? As I fill it up more and more with water, there's a certain height that the water can have. If you, you fill it up any more than that, you should be able to see the coin. So what's going to happen? So if your line of sight is so that you barely see the corner, the idea is after you fill it up with some amount of water, let's say the amount of water is like this, something like that, right? So then what happens, the beam of light comes from the coin or the rock, it goes like this, right? And it bends outward, right? It bends outward in such a way that you're able to actually see the coin or rock. So this is the height required. So we'll do this experimentally, I'll videotape this, right? And then I will um, uh, do the theory of this and then compare the theory to the experiment, right? So Okay, so this is my cup. I decided to use a styrofoam cup that is kind of shallow so that the experiment can work better. So now you see the bottom corner. I marked it with a marker and you see the coin I have it at the bottom. So now I'm going to put this on the table, right? I'm going to aim my view so that I'm seeing the bottom corner. I'm barely seeing the bottom corner of the cup, right? And then I feel, as I fill this up with water, we should eventually be able to see the coin. Um, I have to keep my angle of view the same. See the coin appears. And now I actually see the center of the coin, the middle of the coin. So I have taped the coin at the bottom. So pretty much the whole cup had to be filled. So let's measure the diameter of this cup and the height of the water, which is the same as the height of the cup. And then we can do our calculations and see if we get the same answer. Okay, so now the diameter of my cup, I'm going to measure seven centimeters, right? And then the height of the cup, which is what the height of the water was, okay? The height of the cup here. So uh, the way to set this up is that my uh, line of sight was such that when I was viewing, viewing the edge of the uh, cup, I was seeing the bottom corner of the cup, right? So then if I, when I put the coin over here, all right, so let's fill this up with water. So imagine now the coin is in the middle and then this is filled with water. So a beam of light is gonna go like this and then bend outward so that that line of sight points to the corner, right? So then uh, what is the uh, calculations that we can do? Well, this one, let's focus in on the, the re a refracted angle. Right, so this is going to be theta refracted, and then this one here we can call theta incident. Theta incident, right? So theta refracted, this one, like this. So this is the cup like this. Goes like this and points all the way to the corner, right? So this theta refracted right here is the same as this theta refracted, right? So we can say uh, this is the height of the cup, and this is the whole diameter of the cup, right? So this one is equal to height squared plus diameter squared. So we can say sine of theta refracted is equal to what? Diameter divided by the hypotenuse h squared plus d squared, right? Now, if we focus on the theta incident like this, so then it goes like this from here to here, this is theta incident, right? Whereas the theta refracted is more. 
So theta incident is going to be, this is diameter over 2, this is height, this is square root of height squared plus diameter over 2 quantity squared, right? So then we're going to say sine of theta incident, right, by the geometry of the situation is going to be equal to diameter divided by 2 divided by square root of height squared plus diameter squared over 4, right? D squared over 4. Then we can use Snell's law. Right? So we can say the, the incident or the index of refraction of the in incident medium times sine of theta incident is equal to index of refraction of refracted medium times sine of theta refracted. So uh, theta incident is water, which is 1.33. Right? Then we multiply that by sine of theta incident, which is d over 2 over square root of h squared plus d squared uh, d squared over 4. <clears throat> That's going to be equal to uh, index of refraction of the refracted medium, which is 1, right? Times sine of theta refracted, which is uh, d over square root of h squared plus d squared, OK? And then what's going to happen? Well, the d is going to cancel, right? And then we can uh, cross multiply like this, right? cross multiply so the 2 can go all the way up there so we'll have 1.33 square root of h squared plus d squared is equal to and then the 2 goes over there times square root of h squared plus d squared over 4 okay so uh, then we can square both sides we'll have 1.33 squared h squared plus d squared is equal to 4 times h squared plus d squared over 4. So what is our goal? Well, our goal is if we know the diameter of a cup, we can predict what height we need to fill it up with water so that when, when the water and if the water and the cup are the same height, right, you should be able to see the coin when it is at the bottom, right? So I'm assuming here that the, the top of the water and the top of the cup are the same, right? And the diameter, the cup has a certain diameter, and you should be able to see the coin which is at the bottom. So we can now uh, solve for h, right? So we're gonna have, so then I'm gonna be solving for h squared. So I can bring this d squared to the left side. 1.33 squared d squared minus d squared is equal to 4h squared minus 1.33 squared h squared, okay? So some geometry, some bit of algebra involved, right? So then we can say here uh, 1.33 squared, factor out the d squared, then we're going to get here uh, 1.33 squared minus 1 times d squared is equal to what? 4 minus 1.33 squared h squared. Then, of course, the square root both sides. So square root of 1.33 squared minus 1 divided by square root of 4 minus 1.33 squared, and that's equal to times d is equal to h. Then we can put our diameter 6.7 and then calculate what the predicted height needs to be, right? h is going to be 0.587 times d, right? h is going to be... 0.587 times d, whatever the diameter is. So then if I multiply that by 6.7 centimeters, I didn't even have to necessarily fill the cup completely to the 4.3 centimeter mark. I could have done, gone a little bit lower, right? And I would have still been able to see the center of the coin. So when I was actually seeing the coin in the video, I was not only seeing the center, but I was seeing the side of the coin that is closer to me also. I was seeing like maybe uh, the complete coin or the more than 50% of the coin. So if you just want to be able to see the center of the coin, you can fill up a little bit less and you will still be able to see the coin, right? Uh, you could do this with all kinds of examples. You can say, okay, where if the coin is, let's say, closer to the left side, how much water should you fill, right? Then you would have to fill up more water in order to be able to see the coin. So, or if the coin was closer to the right side, you don't have to fill up as much coin. So the problem can tell you the location of the coin anywhere along the bottom and then tell you how, how high do you have to fill up that water so that you can actually see the coin depending on where it is. The closer the coin is to the left side, 
you would have to fill up a larger amount of water. And the closer the coin is to the right side, you don't have to fill up as much water. So you can see a good example here with, again, using Snell's Law with water and doing a bit of, again, geometry, some algebra, and then doing the calculations and then comparing it to the video and seeing that the result is actually very close, okay? Thank you very much.